Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to the 58th chapter of Isaiah. We're going to try to try to finish up this uh, Bible study. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Some people claim that the... Um, Chapters in Isaiah roughly match the book's order in the King James Bible. The 58th chapter of Isaiah, if that were true, would be the book of Hebrews in the King James Bible. So we're going to take a look and uh, let's start reading. And like I say, uh, if anybody's interested, um, give me an address, get me a USB drive. Uh, when I get done with this series, I'll make a copy of every study I've done and send it to you because uh, I just don't know. I, I'm shocked that my channel is even still online. The Lord's hand must be upon it because I had four videos deleted in one day and uh, I've lost a couple of computers my last computer was stolen by um, somebody I thought was a brethren. So please pray for that to be restored. But uh, what can I tell you? It's the way it goes. Of course, if the Bible predicts in Matthew 24, Mark 13, that brother would betray brother and parent ch the child and child the parent. So a lot of false brethren. Your own family is going to turn against you. Uh, it's not going to be a pretty thing. And I think I understand how Jeremiah felt. Jeremiah was the prophet that predicted that Jerusalem would fall, that there'd be judgment, that there'd be death from war and slavery, captivity, and his message was not very well received. So, I kind of understand how he felt. According to legend, Isaiah was put inside a hollow log, and then they took a saw and cut him in half. According to legend. I don't know if that's true. You know, I don't claim to be a prophet by no means. But they, um, the prophets were... Uh, it was a rough job, and uh, let's just say that they had a short lifespan. So, verse 1, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show thy people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. What's transgression? Breaking of the law. And the house of Jacob? Well, you're talking about Israel. And the house of Israel their sins. Verse 2. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, they say, and thou seest not? Wherefore, we have afflicted our soul, and take, and thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Now, what are they doing? Basically, they're fasting for show. I mean, that's what it's all about, you know. I mean, when you're doing a fast... The people that were commended of the Lord who did a fast were in rough sackcloth. That's sort of like wearing a potato sack, I guess, something not comfortable. They were not eating food and uh, afflicting their souls. And they were a lot of times sitting in ashes. That's what they mean by you know sackcloth and ashes. They weren't doing work to make money. And when it talks about uh, you find pleasure, I suppose that's 
having fun with your spouse. I, you know, I can't think of anything else. But they were doing it. It appears to me this is what they're talking about is they're doing it as a show. So let's read verse 4. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Huh. Now, is there a companion verse in the New Testament about this? How about Matthew chapter 6 and verse 16? Jesus speaking. Matter of fact, this whole chapter, verse chapter 6 of Matthew is, wow. Yeah, it's, it's the whole thing's worth reading. All right, Matthew 6, 16. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites... Ah, moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not to men to fast, but unto thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. So evidently, they're doing it as a show. Isaiah 58, verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day of the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness. So, in other words, if you're going to fast, be obedient. You know, don't, don't go to church on Sunday and then act like a devil Monday through Saturday, which is unfortunately many, I guess you could say, do. So, is this is not this the fast that I've chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked that cover him. Oh, when thou seest the naked that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. In other words, our own family, right? If you ask me, this matches James chapter 2, verse 13, I guess we'll start. For he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? Now, people will argue, and they'll try to muddy the waters, but the, the truth of the matter is, works follow faith. Works are a product of faith. An apple tree produces apples because it is an apple tree. A tree doesn't produce apples to become an apple tree. It just doesn't work that way. Okay? Though a man say he hath faith and have not and have not works, can faith save him? Now, this is something we just read in Isaiah. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? 
and I've said it many times, but you know, you got a coat, you got five coats in a closet, and four of them you haven't worn in years, and you got a pot of stew on the stove, and you're going to throw half of it away because you can't eat it all, and you're not going to share it with somebody that's doesn't have that it's cold out and they're they're cold and they don't have any food and you think the lord's going to bless you i don't think so notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body what doth it profit what good is your faith verse 17 even so faith if it hath not works is dead being alone Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And you can read the whole rest of the whole chapter if you wish. So, all right, let's go back to Isaiah 58, verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thine house, to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. Huh, re-reward. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. Somebody just pointed this out to me not too long ago. What does it mean, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity? Uh, I guess the modern translation is uh, giving them the middle finger. In America here, we call it giving them the bird and speaking vanity. What is that? Cussing them out and giving them the finger, the bird? Uh, that's... I guess, you know, Solomon said there's no new thing under the sun. Verse 10. And if thou draw thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt, shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasures, nor speaking thine own words. In other words, the Sabbath was to be a day that you reflect upon the things of the Lord, you know, not, uh, I try to do my Bible studies on the Sabbath day. That's, I try to uh, get a lot of them done on there. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, I'm not, I'm probably one of the world's worst Sabbath keepers. But, um, you know, it's just a day that we were to abstain from our pleasures, a day from our money-making operations, so that a day that we could reflect upon the Lord and the things that he did, and a day to rest the body, too. So, a rest spiritually and a rest physically. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, the Sabbath was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. Verse 14, Then shalt 
thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to them them alone, all one God, world without end. In Jesus' name, amen.